Senator Amy Klobuchar of Minnesota got her chance to question Judge Kavanaugh earlier today. She joins me now. Um, Senator, what, what was your takeaway from today uh, in the, the first day of actual questions and answers from the nominee? Well, my major takeaway, and of course I'm going right back, it's still going on, but my major takeaway is one of my biggest concerns is that this nominee was handpicked uh, by a president at a time when you have a major special counsel investigation going on with the president's former campaign chair, private lawyer, all subjected to multiple federal charges. Well, this is going on. He handpicked a nominee with an expansive view of executive presidential power. And my takeaway is none of those views have changed. Uh, you look at the questions asked of uh, Judge Kavanaugh when it came to um, should a president be able to declare a law uh, unconstitutional after it's been declared constitutional and basically not enforce it. That didn't change from the opinions he wrote um, a few years back. Uh, questions by Chris Coons about the special counsel statute where he said, well, should a president just be able to uh, get rid of that and, uh, you know, remove a special counsel? And he said, well, that was my view in 1998, but didn't really say what his view is now. Or the questions about could a president be subpoenaed for an investigation? Again, didn't answer that. So I would say the record stands when it comes to this very expansive view yeah. of executive power. The, the, the being subpoenaed for investigation was striking to me because having spent a lot of time reporting on with legal experts and having them on the show and talking to them, widely consensus view is that the Nixon precedent uh, is that you can subpoena a president. Yes, exactly. Well, that's about the tapes, but yes, right. that you can subpoena the tapes. And again, it was just unsettling that we didn't get answers um, on those types of questions that were so important that we all outlined in our opening statements. I'd say the second thing, which just hasn't gotten enough attention, I really focused on some of the consumer cases. The fact that he had been overruled by the D.C. Circuit, all these judges had overruled him when he said the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau should be uncomfortable constitutional, a bureau that, of course, has brought $12 billion back to consumers for fraudulent mortgages and loans. And he said it was the headless fourth branch of government. And it did have a head, as you know, and her name was Elizabeth Warren. But that is what he did. Um, he then also declared that the net neutrality rules were unconstitutional, something that, again, set up to protect consumers, even playing field. So I went through a series of those to show this pattern uh, where he really did have extreme views when it came to uh, consumer issues. And yeah. that should be very unsettling as uh, you look at someone for the Supreme Court. On, the, on that CFPB case, because it's interesting, it came before the D.C. Circuit. Um, he writes the dissent, right? I mean, the, 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 the other, the other right. folks in the D.C. Circuit say, of course, this is duly constituted. There are statutory Including and constitutional authority. Including Republican appointed judges who said that they said, well, they literally said, well, if you say that, then what happens to the FTC? Or how about the Social Security Administration that actually only has one head, just like the Consumer Protection Financial Bureau? Um, so there's real problems with this decision and his opinion in the dissent outside of the actual Consumer Protection Financial Bureau. Does, does, does the, the sort of madness of what's happening around you get to you on Capitol Hill on a day like today? I mean, you've got the Woodwork book. No, I'm, it's an honest question. you got the Woodwork book. you get this op-ed drops, and I wonder, you know, saying that the president's completely unfit for office. We're trying to keep him on the guardrails. And you're up there, you know, doing your constitutional duty of advising and consent. Like, what is the re How do you process that? Well, first of all, you have a duty, you have a job, so you focus on what you can do and what you can do best. Obviously, right now we're trying to get as many documents as we can, because uh, the White House is basically um, holding them up, shielding them, and we're trying to make as many as we can public. But beyond that, what really bothers me about what's going on right now, Chris, is that we should be governing from opportunity, right? Uh, we are at a stable moment in the economy, and we should be doing things like immigration reform, doing something about farmer prices, but instead we're in one crisis after another. And certainly uh, this anonymous uh, letter to the New York Times, this op-ed, uh, has put the White House in another crisis of their own doing. But that is one of the things that really bothers me, and I figure that just as the Supreme Court, I said, should be a ballast in turbulent times, and you want a justice that would be like that, who's a check and balance, right now we have to be that balance, ballast in turbulent times. Um what do you expect 
Uh, tomorrow, another day of questions. We, we have seen Kavanaugh practice the routine that has been well worn. He didn't even answer today, which I thought was interesting, because the president pardoned himself, which he said was a hypothetical that never exactly. occurred to him and people have been talking about it for months, obviously. Um, w w what's, the, what's the approach tomorrow? You're going to see a, more of a focus on executive power just because we haven't gotten the answers and there's a lot of other articles and there's a lot of other cases we can focus on there. Uh, you're going to see we are pushing for these documents to be made public. I hope uh, we will see a number of those documents be made public tomorrow. Right now we just have the documents I asked for, the campaign finance documents, which for some reason were singled out. And by the way, they're a treasure trove when it comes to campaign finance because he actually says that he believes um, this back in 2002 that the campaign finance limits um, appear unconstitutional to him. So imagine if we had yep. those kinds of documents from the White House. So I think you're going to see more push on campaign finance, more push on the executive power, and of course all of these um, arguments and cases and things uh, where he has views that are way off the mainstream. And we have to make that case given the composition of the court right now. All right. Um, Senator Amy Klobuchar, who was in that hearing room today, is standing outside of it now, is headed back as the hearings um, uh, continue. I do appreciate you uh, ducking out uh, for a few minutes. Thank you, Chris. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.